like to call to order uh, the meeting of the Business Development Commission on uh, July 13th at 6.34 p.m. Dave, you've got the attendance and all that, right? Yep. Okay. Um, just, so to, just to be clear, I've got myself and Josh virtual, and then I have Ron, Karen, Bill, and I believe President Reed is in attendance, but I can't see him. Hi there. Special guest star. Oh, yeah, right. yeah, yeah, this is celebrity board. Yeah, I mean, yeah. See, I'm right. Yeah. Celebrity, you guys got to. Oh, okay. So we're angled, right? There you go. How's that? Yeah. A little bit better. Yeah, better. Okay. Um, so, yes, thank you, uh, President Reed, for joining us this evening. You just work with Mike. Is <laughs> that <laughs> Mike's been fine all these years. Your Highness. <laughs> um, okay, so no one uh, is here from the public, so uh, we'll skip by public uh, comments. Um, if we could take a minute to review the minutes from uh, take a minute to review the minutes from June eighth, um, that would be awesome. And then after a few minutes, I will entertain a motion to approve. Or if you have any corrections, additions, just please point them up. You don't have an extra set of the minutes, do you? I do. And there we go. And then printer, if you like. Computer. Sometimes we get them all printed like thank this. And no, I'm good. Thank you. Good. And um, Karen, are you going to abstain, or are you going to? Yeah, I was just going to say, can I abstain because I wasn't there? I just want to make sure I get the notes right. Okay. Well, you need to yeah. probably get I'm here. Okay. So we, we learned, uh, Vice Chairman, we learned that I can make up a quorum if necessary because I'm an ex officio member and therefore I have voting rights as well. If I'm really? intended. Yeah. The lawyer says so, so it's got to be true. So, so when we were trying to figure out if we could have it or not, we dug into it because of the village president's role and being on the commissions and stuff. If I needed to take role and vote and stuff like that, I can do that as well. You plan to participate? I, I will plan to participate. Yes. And thank you for doing that. No worries. I committed. To, I committed to. Uh, yeah, yeah, already said I committed to Aaron that if Aaron can't make it to be true to have it a representative of the village board, yeah. then I would come and do some things. That's great. Yes. And then, like, if, if you have enough people, then I won't vote, but if you don't, I won't. Okay. Okay. Awesome. I will uh, make a motion to approve the meeting minutes from June 8th. Can I second, even though I wasn't there? I don't think if you vote, you can't. Oh, it. never mind. We'll second. Yeah. Any questions or comments? Okay. Uh, all those in favor of approving the minutes from June 8th, please indicate uh, by saying aye. Aye. All those opposed say nay. Okay. Not hearing any uh, at this point, the uh, ayes have it. So motion, uh, motion passes. All right, the next item on our agenda is an update on Streetscape, which I don't know if you guys have seen when you came in, but holy cow. I watched yeah, it, looking yeah. good. I, I was, uh, just a brief little story, I was coming back from Michigan, and uh, I, uh, I thought, well, I want to swing in and see what progress was like. It was after the 4th of July weekend. I thought, well, probably not much has gotten done, and I must have spent about 30 minutes down here. I was so blown away with how it looks. Yeah. Uh, what's everybody else's opinion so far? It's looking great so far. Yeah. 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 You, haven't it's seen it you haven't seen it yet, Dave? I, I saw it probably about three weeks ago. Okay. Well, you might want to uh, make yeah. a trip down next time you're around because a lot's changed since then. A lot has changed. The streets in, basically. Um, all the parking, basically. All the curb cutouts are all done. Yeah. All the uh, cutouts for the uh, uh, trees and uh, the stances for the light. Uh, lights are all in. I noticed our old lights are still there, but I heard in the BDC or in the beautification committee that we just have the old lights up there while we're waiting for the new ones to come in. Right. Right. Um, so, but beyond that, Josh, do you have any other updates as far as timelines and things like that you that you can share? Yeah, the contractor. Uh, we met with the contractor this morning for our weekly update. And he said that they intend to have the street open by the middle of next week. Um, they just have to close it then about one day. Uh, I think he said sometime in early August. 
because they have to wait a couple of weeks um, before they can put down the uh, the type of paint that they're going to put down for the sidewalks. It's 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 not just a paint that goes over it, right? If you remember, it's kind of a something fancy. Um, so they have to just give that a couple of weeks and then they'll close the road off. I think for a day they said um, to let that cure and, and open it back up right away. So hopefully uh, next week it'll be open. So the dye is going to be in addition because I noticed it's kind of tinted red now. And that's the, just on the that's a, that's on the uh, wall out. Oh, okay. so we're going to the whole street the, cross, the crosswalks. And the crosswalks. And stuff. Okay. So yeah, it's like I said sidewalks, didn't I? I meant crosswalk. Okay. So um, we talked on that same end. Um, I was out. Uh, Mr. Pizzolato, I just sent you some photos. Yeah, I just got my reply. It looks. Hard. I took I took I, I took them before I walked in here. Um, they're they're laying the bricks because if you remember, we salvaged some bricks, the original mm -hmm. cobblestones, and they, we we are going to uh, put them around the clock, which is being refurbished at the current time. Those are starting to go in, uh, so they and they look really good. We've got uh, some plaques that uh, were donated originally from family that donated us the clock. I spoke with Jay today. There's going to be a. Um, a plaque that's inlaid into the sidewalk with our logo and the date that the streetscape was completed and that kind of stuff. So that's going to be neat. Um, we're going to have kind of a grand opening ribbon cutting dedication. You guys are the first group to hear about this. I don't even know if Josh, what Josh is aware of this. Um, we, uh, we're going to let the street open in the middle of the week next week. They're going to close it down again when they need to. Coon Creek is coming off that Sunday. It's the 25th, I believe is the date. And um, uh, the parade kicks off at noon, and before the parade kicks off, we're going to do a dedication because people should be downtown for the parade. 28th, correct? 28th. Yeah. Uh, the 25th is the beginning of the parade, the so, first day, Thursday. Yep, that's why I keep saying it. I knew it was a, <laughs> one of those days. Yeah. That Sunday. I knew it was So, August yes. 28th. <clears throat> so, that's our, that's kind of our, our thought process. Because everybody will be down there. We're going to try to get the chamber on board, um, or, you know, but everybody should be down for the parade anyway. So that would make the most sense to dedicate it when there's actually people downtown. Yeah. Okay. Awesome. That's exciting. So um, hopefully you guys can all be there because you guys are the driving force in all of this. Okay. And then uh, I, Bill, you put a just put an email out. Did you get a time on there, or Mike? Do you know a time? So the parade kicks off at noon. At noon. So okay. I would say that somewhere between 11:30 and noon. That's what that would okay. be. It's gonna make it 11 in my calendar. Sure. Sorry, it'll take long. No. Yeah, yeah, right. Yeah, I mean, it'll be more of a formality than anything. Right. Um, okay, awesome. That's fantastic. So that'll be exciting. Five years in the making yeah. from, the, <laughs> from the original start. So, all right, fantastic. Um, well, great job, obviously, to uh, to the um, to the administration um, and obviously uh, the engineering teams and uh, you know, all the people that were involved in coordinating. Um, it's uh, it's good to see it's finally uh, coming to fruition. So. Couldn't believe it. I know. <laughs> I, I I really thought the streets were going to be a lot narrower when they when you saw the concrete. Well, I, I had a few questions about that. And then and then when they once they poured the concrete, it looks a lot wider. Yeah. yeah, yeah. This, and, and I think people are going to like the parking. We've added the additional parking on the side, which you guys did, which I think is fantastic. Yeah. Um, I'm sure that businesses downtown are going to appreciate being, you know, having people be able to drive through there. When is uh? 72 and uh when do they have any so we hear we hear that it's supposed to be august 1st i don't believe it okay. but we hear august 1st okay so they're committing to that in their construction meetings i spoke with jay this morning they said even with the rain and they were buying today they're still shooting for august 1st okay wow but i don't i mean it's the state so you take it with a grain of salt sorry you just i just I've, yeah, never, I've, I've learned never to trust them when it comes to that kind of stuff we looked at it last week and what the progress of what they had left yet to do, and it was a fair amount. A uh, number of sections of culvert uh, they need to install yet, and then there's paving and restoration. And I was like, wow, you got a lot to do. I figured end of the summer. Well, I, just because the road's open doesn't mean the work is going to stop either. So they're doing the under road work and stuff, and then they'll do the paving so that we can get through and the intersection so we can get through. Mm -hmm. I mean, they told they told Chicken Dip, I believe it was 60 days. You know, for when they close the intersection. So if we go back to the beginning, right before this, before school was even out. So if you think about that, you know, I mean, that's right. We're right in that kind of ballpark mm -hmm. when they told Chicken Dip that they were closing the intersection. Okay. So. Okay. Cool. So 
That will definitely uh, make people in town uh, happier. So a um, few more weeks of pain. Okay. okay. And and hopefully, I think in the end, it'll all be worth it. So mm -hmm. out of curiosity, that big, I was in town with that big rain that came through. Mm -hmm. uh, all the culverts weren't in or anything like that, so none of that sort of was affected. So no, well, there was some of their work that was washed out, but nothing. I mean, they're, they've got big pumps and they're redirecting the flow of the creek and, and all kinds of stuff. So, I mean, so we didn't get a sense of because no, it was, no. I, that's what I assume. I saw some things on Facebook that I try not to be that close to. I know. Um, Sometimes it'll suck you in. Yeah, you, you, that's what you get. Yeah. <laughs> Okay. All right. Cool. There's a big brick here. Um, all right. So let's move on to the uh, application. Uh, did everybody get a copy of the caves application? Yes. Okay. So let's uh, let's start uh, with that, uh, Bill. If you would be so kind to sure. walk us through again. Not that I've said this a thousand times, but it's probably not been said enough. Uh, thank you for all the diligent work and the specific uh, coaching and things that you did. Uh, that you do with all our applicants. Um, we really do appreciate that. But, Thank um, you. Go ahead and uh, explain to us what we're looking at. I'm going to work off of the packet that we received from the meeting today, and I'll go through it in order. And, and we'll go through. If any questions come up, please fire away and let me know. Um, the application itself was complete and summarizes under the description of work what they're intended to do. Um, new roof. Uh, they're going to remove the cedar shake that covers the two awnings and replace it with a copper colored metal roof. Um, they're going to do some just maintenance and repair to the loose soffit and fascia on the building. And then um, on the east side, there's some masonry that's in rough shape. They're going to rebuild the portion that needs to be rebuilt, and then they're going to tuck point the rest of it, uh, just that wall. And then uh, they're going to be doing painting and staining in various areas where it needs it, and we'll get to the photos. I'll show you where those are at. And then finally, the building is going to get new gutters and downspouts, which it has never had which apparently over the course of time has affected the integrity of the sidewalk, settlement, drainage, freezing, et cetera. So uh, a much needed uh, maintenance uh, item. Um, they filled out a, uh, they've got a form and introduction, some of the family history, and then some of the work that they've done up to this point. I'm on the first page, it contains two photos. It shows the condition of the roof, the first photo. Uh, it's pretty rough. Uh, I'm guessing it's at least 25 years old. Uh, it's in no condition for repair. It definitely needs a complete tear off and replacement. They're going to use or install 30 year architectural shingles, which are the laminated ones. That's pretty much what the industry norm is now. Uh, oh, here they said it was last done in 1990. So that's uh, 34 years. Wow. Yeah. Um, and then the uh, second photo on that page shows, uh, it, I guess it'd be the south facing and if you take note in that photo, look at the windows. Um, there's one right in front of this out, outdoor staircase. It's still intact, but the rest of them have all been covered over. The upstairs isn't really used for anything. It's not ADA accessible. Uh, it's not heated. They don't really do much of anything with it. So uh, as part of the painting project, they're going to match the color of those plywood panels or inserts uh, with the rest of the paintwork for now. Um, the upstairs needs all new windows. Um, but that's a project for another day yes, at this point. Um, okay. um, did you guys all have the photo, photos yeah. that I'm looking at? Okay, okay. Um, they're also going to paint that outdoor st stairwell or landing that wraps the staircase, and they're also painting the fence and the masonry block all the way down the outside of the building, so it's all uniform and matches. Um, I'll flip it on to the next page. This was one of the problems identified when we went out to do the site visit after they showed me the scope of the project. This awning close to the alley, which would be at the west end, repeatedly gets clipped by delivery trucks. And I said, that's a problem. You're going to go and put a new roof on this thing? I said, you've got to do something. You've got to shorten it. So they're going to take it back two feet uh, to the east to shorten it so that when the trucks make the corner, this won't happen anymore. Well, it's less likely that it will happen, much less likely. Uh, these two pictures are the awnings I talked about. This one uh, facing north has got all oh, algae and things growing all over. This will all be stripped and redone with the co uh, faux copper metal, and that's the east east awning. So similar to what's being done up here, since right? Very similar. What was, what was done? Yep, like a standing seam, uh, old-fashioned sort of top. The next is the masonry. This addresses the um, uh, lack of integrity here down in the corner. They're actually loose and coming out. He's going to rebuild. I don't know how many square feet. I'll look at the, the bid. It's not a lot, but then he's going to go back and tuck point. You can see the, the voids in the masonry. Mm -hmm. 
the, the mortar's gone, but he's going to retop point that for now. One of the things that um, the co applicant, Dave, no, no, um, Mr. Pearson, Gina and Dave, Dave Ruth, and uh, yeah, Gina Pearson and Bob Pearson. Bob Pearson. Um, they were talking about the Ford garage and how they um, were impressed with how that turned out, as are, as, as are many people. And that's something down the road that they might consider uh, to, you know, get the building looking a little bit more uniform. But right now, just with what, what they've got on this, is it's busy enough. I said, you can always come back next year for the masonry and or the windows if the program's funded again mm -hmm. and if it has money. So uh, anyway, one step at a time. The next photo shows uh, some of the paint work that'll be done. This is the uh, old Lido, Lido's Pizza. This is going to be scraped and repainted, the masonry. And this shows the painting I mentioned earlier. They're going to do all the upper windows that are currently covered over, and then the block building, and then the fence. It'll all be uh, painted the same color. Now they're painting the brick? No. Okay. Um, they're not doing any painting to the brickwork. Okay. This is just to the basically all the wood surfaces that are peeling and looking a little bit. Well, it's a, it does say that the alley side would be painted. Okay. You're right. It so, is. But they're, they're painting that the red paint that's peeling that's against the coat. But not the brick. But well, the side there's two that, types of brick. There's like a cinder block there on the side of the yeah, building. Yeah, that's being painted. This one, okay. The block, the cinder block, but not the red masonry. Well, okay. Just like Cassie, do you know what, what they're painting it? What color? Um, I think. Well, I'll show you the two colors that they've got. Okay. Uh, they told me uh, last year they spent some time scraping and repainting all the windows along the side, and there's before and after pictures. You'll see what it looked like. And it's a combination of, I think, black and then like kind of a oh, I saw this. eggplant. Okay. Yeah. Kind of not purple, but uh, this next photo shows the oak hardwood at the two entrances that needs to be scraped and sanded, stained, and repainted. And not repainted, varnished. Mm -hmm. uh, they're going to redo the entries on both of those. And then this just shows some of the maintenance that's needed. This is the uh, northwest corner. Uh, up real high at the top where some of the siding, some of the sockets loose. There's actually an opening or a gap up here that they have to close up. I don't know if they've been getting critters or whatnot, but they're going to be addressing that. Um, the soffit along the north side, I don't know if the photo shows it so much, but there's like white efflorescence or minerals on the underside of the soffit. They're going to have all that pressure washed off to clean it up. And then um, these are the pictures at the completion of their paintwork last year, uh, what they did. Next is more of the pictures of the work that they did uh, up to this point. The shutters were all scraped and repainted. The windows were all scraped and repainted. And the next photo shows you what they looked like before. And then look, they, here's down here, the lower windows are down up here. This is before. I can also ask, because uh, I'm going to call her anyway, confirmation of what color the masonry is going to be. Yeah, I, I don't remember to be honest with you, but I thought it was one of these two colors, so it'll be complimentary. Yeah, Gina's really big into the complimentary colors. Yeah. So I can imagine that she painted something like it is. Yeah. Yeah, I would think so too. Um, that brings us to the proposals, of which there are only three. The first is the largest, and that's uh, the roof. The roof, the gutters, the repair of the loose soffit, um, also stripping the two uh, shake shingles off of the two awnings or overhangs. This is from I-Course Construction. This, I'm, I'm confident, is at least the second proposal they had gotten because they had originally gotten some bids that were substantially higher and they were thinking that it might curb them from doing anything. It was that high, uh, that much higher. So they were very pleased when this came in at uh, the 32.5. And it's someone local. Um, but other than that, uh, that's the description of the scope of the work, including the gutters. Um, the downspouts were a concern for me when I was out of, out of, the, uh, out of the project. The, um, the east end of the building has no convenient discharge for the rainwater, and this is a massive roof. So one, there's going to be a ton of water, two, it's got to have a place to go, and just dumping a downspout out on the sidewalk is not going to fly. So I said, I asked them to check with uh, the village about, or the EEI, the engineering, um, how, how can we do this? We've got a saw cutter, put something below grade and dump it into the catch basin. I guess they went and talked to, uh, was it Dave? This is Dave, 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 yes. And uh, he said they, yes, we'll saw cut the sidewalk and do whatever's necessary in order to get them something, I guess, underneath so it'll discharge into the catch basin. At the same time, I guess the rainwater runoff at that, at that corner sometimes floods. 
it's not able to uh, handle everything. So hopefully this will eliminate the freezing on the sidewalk and all that. Because they were talking about going originally with one downspout. I said, you, you definitely need the two. There's no doubt because there's so much runoff. It's the larger the two slopes. So other than that, that's the bid for the bulk of the work. The other two, um, there's some product information about the IKO shingles, ice and water shield. Um, the second proposal is for the masonry work that uh, Mr. Ross is going to do. Um, it's not a huge job, but basically to restore the integrity of that corner and then tuck point where the grout or the mortar is missing. That's $1,800. The third and final proposal is for the paintwork, the pressure washing, the scraping, the prepping, um, and then also the work around the two uh, hardwood doors, the entries, where they're going to stain, restain, and mm -hmm. revarnish. Um, they're going to scrape all the windows that haven't been done yet and paint those. Uh, same color scheme to match. And then uh, that's it. That bid is 2900 The three together um, totaled 37200 And on Monday, the beautification committee met and everyone, it was pretty unanimous. Um, everyone was comfortable with the project and we voted to approve it or fund it at 75% of the cost, uh, which wound up being a net of uh, 27.9. Um, in working with uh, the Pearsons, they've been very receptive to the two things, a couple of things I brought up. Yeah, at Monday's meeting, a couple of the questions were, uh, as it pertained to the windows, what long-term eventually will they intend to do with that? And I said, that's always something we can, I can mention to them that they come back for if they so choose. And then secondly, the staining the brick, that was the other element that, would probably make a big impact on the overall appearance of the building, but that's not in this, the scope of this work. They couldn't stain the brick right now if they wanted to, right? They'd have to tuck point first and then stain it? They, well, depending on how much maintenance is needed, typically that's how it's done. You got it. Before you're going to go and stain it, you're going to touch up any of the mortar that needs to be repaired or any loose bricks. And the worst part of the masonry right now is on that east corner. So even if they wanted to stain, they'd have to do this part of it. For, that's why I bring that. Yeah, they have to you're right. The tuck pointing first. Yeah, but they're not tuck pointing the whole building. Just no. so, I mean, at eighteen hundred, I'm assuming it's it's just spots, right? It is. Some of these pictures. And it's uh, on the east elevation, and it's to the south end, and so it's the southeast corner is what's crumbling in, in the pictures, and that definitely needs to be addressed. Because mm -hmm. I mean, ideally, if you stand back and look at all the masonry on that east elevation, I think it was an overhead door at one point. That's my guess, because I guess before the police office, it was a uh, um, blacksmith shop. And I'm guessing that's where their, their doorway was, because the brick has been completely modified and reconfigured and repaired. I think there was even a second story. You know how sometimes barns have an open door up high? I think this building had that to get things up and hoisted into the, into the building, because it's it's in the center. It's completely been re-bricked. But who knows? You know. But yeah, that's definitely the worst end of the building right now in terms of masonry is that east elevation. The north elevation is real consistent. You stand back and look at it, it's in pretty good shape. Mm -hmm. and, uh, it all looks the same, very little modification that's really visible. But so that's my story and I'm sticking to it. Um, any questions on the project scope or any of the three proposals that came in? Dave, are you able to hear me okay? Yeah, crystal clear. Uh, no questions from my side um, in terms of what you presented. Only question I have is um, whatever ended up happening with Rose Garden and what does that do to the amount of funds we have? I'll defer to Josh. Yeah, and well, well, so, Josh, you want this one or do you want me to take it? Uh, I heard you talk about it earlier with uh, Chairman Kajeki. I think you got it. So, so, so the village board ultimately approved both recommendations for Rose Garden and the um, and for blocks. Um, there was a lot of talk about said the process in which that took place. Um, there are some uncommitted dollars left from the ARPA funding that are available as uncommitted dollars that could be spent for this purpose, but again, they're uncommitted and there's not 
um, uh, a set a set pur purpose for them. The concern that was brought forth by the trustees, there's a couple of them. Okay, so there's one of the trustees that that seems to remember that we were pretty hard on the hundred thousand dollars, and that's it. And once the money was gone, it was gone. Once the when the project or when this program was founded, um, there but there were also two years of this pro uh, project or program that were underfunded by twenty five thousand dollars a piece because we didn't have the money to commit to doing to to fully funding this program. So there was a lot of discussion at the village board uh, about what the process should be for for like an uncommitted project. Um, what was recommended by the village manager and uh, the budget committee will be meeting to discuss this in the next couple of weeks um, would be that they need to present a budget amendment along with this ask. Um, if staff recommends that this is something that we should move forward with, which you know I think that the staff would recommend as as did the BBC and beautification. So the budget committee is going to meet in the next week. Uh, to discuss a process formally coming up with that process and then what should be presented to the village board, which would make it a much easier conversation at the board level would be a proposed budget amendment and then and, and going into the reasons why. And then at that point, there would be clear representation of where the funds were coming from, uh, what fund it was coming out of and, and that kind of thing. And then the project would come underneath that for approval after the, the budget was amended. So um, there's some there's some of the trustees that um, feel very strongly one direction or another. There's also some trustees that feel differently about the two previous let's say previous boards. I mean, the BDC and beautifications responsibility to those dollars. So it's my view that the uh, that the village board is the keeper of the funds, right? Your guy, the beautification and BDC should uh, vote on projects as they're presented. Um, based on their merits and whether or not we should choose to fund them. And it's basically like a pre-approval if you're buying a house, right? But you have to get it to the village board and they're the ones that are going to write the check. So at, the, so at that end, there was more questions about where the money was coming from. Are we overfunding this program? What do we do the next time one of these things come up? It was very procedural type questions. And so that's what the budget committee aims to address. It's coming up with a formalized process for the second thing. So I would not concern uh, yourself um, respectfully, Dave. I wouldn't think too much about the dollars okay. involved as far as like whether or not we have the money or not, because at the end of the day, just because there's two recommendations, once it gets to the village board, if the village board says, you know what, we can't do this, we can't fund this project, let's work with them, we would re-engage uh, Bill to work with them and see if they would, you know, consider waiting or or that kind of thing. Got it. Okay. That's really that's really what it came down to at the village board level. There was a lot of discussion about things, but it was mostly procedural, if anything else. That's good insight. Thanks. Because I think a lot of times we we have the conversation regarding funds, and I think this alleviates that. So um nothing more from my side. It's really kind of hard for you guys to be able to function if you're concerned about dollars when ultimately, again, respectfully, you have no control over the dollars, yes. right? The, the village, the village board has control over the dollars. So for you, I mean, it's good to have it in the back of your mind that we've already approved these projects. And then Bill has that conversation as well to say, you know, we're getting really close on funding. You know, this may be something that doesn't happen, you know, which I'm sure you had that conversation with Gina as well, you know. Just about this is what it is, the facts of the situation. But at the end of the day, it's up to the village board. Right. And so you shouldn't be in it. Your board should not be in a position where that influences any type of decision that you make. So I appreciate that clarification because I have the same concern. So thank you for that. I think that's a good thing. It also allows us to focus on the essence of what it is we're really here to do. Right. That the applicants go out and do what we need to do in terms of the legwork and then just present it to the board and say, it's your baby now. Right, know, right. Financially, if you can fund it, great. If not. And, and that's why I'm really pushing on staff and the budget committee to come up with a process, like a straight, like bulletproof outline process for this type of thing. Because the type of discussion that we had at the board level, you can go back and watch the video, is not a discussion that I want to have again. I don't want to be tearing 
boards apart or going back to original minutes of why things were created and, and all of that kind of stuff. I mean, we've already addressed that there's some, I don't want to say holes, but tweaks that we can make to this program, right? We've committed to doing that part of it. But at the end of the day, if it's an, I treat this as no different than any other unbudgeted expense that wasn't an emergency, right? You need to figure out a way to pay for it. And if you can't, then it was like any other purchase, right? We would divert or push it off to the next year, you know, or something of that nature. But that's not your decision because you're not going to make them reapply in a year. We've already they've already done everything that they need to do. Now, granted, in today's market, they might need to reapply because the quotes will be different. Thing, mm -hmm. right. you know. But we already know what the project's going to. Be. So, hopefully, that helps in your decision making process. Thanks, Denise. Very much. Focus. Right. And this is not a concern. I just have one small comment to make. Um, dollar amount wise it's very minute but on the first quote the last thing listed there is pick up permit i think is what it says um if that means that part of this quote is the permit fees just want to let you know that the current facade guidelines don't allow for uh, facade money to be spent on any kind of permit fees so you could still you know recommend this and the board could still approve this dollar amount uh, when they came in for reimbursement we just wouldn't you know if they listed permit fees we just wouldn't reimburse that portion of course, you know, the village board could direct us, you know, if they're if they're clear, they could tell us, you know, go ahead and do it. But uh, otherwise we won't reimburse permit fees. Very small thing, probably a few hundred dollars or maybe a thousand, but just want to put it out there. I don't see the board reversing that decision because we've had that discussion many times. Yeah. So but at the end of the day, when they make out the check, it's just gonna be I'll remind the applicant I have to call her about something else as well. And I'll say FYI, just so you know, the bid says one thing, our guidelines are another, and ultimately when you incur the cost, it's going to be out of pocket, not part of the application. So they've been easy to deal with. I'm sure that will be a shocker. Thanks. And I, and I also want to say the trustee pilot screening was the most critical of, of the approval of this, basically because of the unfunded part of it. And that she was unsure of where the dollars were coming from. She's also the chairman of the budget committee. Her and I had a very, very good conversation about this today, and she totally understands, you know, the the impact that this is going to have, and, and and the goal of all the committees and all that stuff. But again, it's more procedural stuff than anything else. So I, I'd like to figure out a way to not have those type of I don't want to say divisive, but those the tone of that conversation was not something that I want. At the board level, which is not. And if you guys were in attendance, you understand exactly what I'm talking about. Let's, let's vote to, to, to your point. Let's just vote on the merits of it and whether or not we can afford it or we, or we can. You know? Yep. So. Okay. Any other questions regarding the application? Just a comment. I mean, dollars aside, I really appreciate just the background and the letter that they wrote just to give perspective and kind of humanize the whole situation. And it was really interesting. And um, I didn't realize how much they contributed to the community with the concerts and whatnot. And I think that that's just nice information to have. It makes me feel good about what we're doing. Mm -hmm. yeah. So I just wanted to say that. Yeah, it's been around a long time. It's uh, pretty awesome. Um, I will point out that we are in, you know, the the south side of the building does fall into that gray area. And I think one of the things that we have to talk about when we find these going to be like, here we go. I brought it up on every <laughs> single, every single project. Um, you know, it is not visible from any of the streets that, uh, that we have uh, that are listed in the facade program. So I think one of the tweaks that we need to do in modifying this is we need to address that. Now, I read over this a few times today, and it does not necessarily disclude. It says that this is the reading of, of it. Um, it says that, uh, let me find this again. Um, go, uh, okay, other improvements that are visible from a, from a public right of way and have a positive impact on the appearance of the building may also be considered. So, you know, perhaps, you know, the only one, you know, maybe being Hampshire Social that might not have fallen uh, in that uh, category because that was an alley. Um, but this is, is it, it is visible from a public right of way, right? It is visible well, from Maple. In Washington. And, yeah. uh, well, the south side is not visible from 
from Washington. I was referring to the west side. Yeah, west side for sure. Um, so I think that is an area that we do need to address um, because it, it has been a point of contention that's come up uh, on several occasions. Um, and I think it's something that we definitely need to iron out whether or not that is going to be an issue because um, it has come up. Because um, we had the, what, the 148 State Street where we did the alley work. Rose Garden, where we did some alley work that was viewable from uh, Jefferson. Um, I think the back of the Rose Garden was technically, you, you could see that from Jefferson. Right. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right. Yep. Um, but I do think that is a, an area that we need to really, you know, if we're going to do a workshop on this, which we should probably schedule here yeah. now that this is the last one that's being done, mm -hmm. um, that's something we have to bring up because theoretically, based on things that we've talked about in the past, that this would have been a point of contention. But at this point, now that it's become part of the norm, um, I don't have a problem, you know, pushing it through, but we definitely have to address that issue, mm -hmm, yeah. whether or not it has, because yeah. the facade generally is the facade of Main Street, right? right. It is the, uh, the appearance front of, the of the front of the building. It's why we don't fund inside. It's why we don't do basements. It's why we don't do roofs that cannot be seen. I mean, we had that with the Harvest building, I think originally at one point we had discussed that. Um, the Harvest uh, real estate building um, that was out there. So um, given the scenario that we're in here and the projects that we've already approved, I'm not going to make a point of contention just on principle uh, again, but uh, it is something that we definitely need to handle. I uh, agree. In, in general, I struggle. I struggle with the roof. And, and even, even within this project, I struggle with the roof personally because it's not, yes, it's, I mean, it's enough of a slope. You can see it and it does need to get redone. You know, but I, I, I feel like the roof is a pretty expensive part of this, right? Which I get, but if they took that money and put it into the actual facade, which would be tuck pointing the brick of the whole building, you know, I'm not here to pick a pro project apart, but I'm just saying like, as, as you look at the clarification in which you're seeking, mm -hmm. the way the program's written, it, you know, you can see the roof, but it's not really the facade. The lower portions of it, are like the awning where they're ripping off the cedar shank shingles and that kind of stuff, but like asphalt shingles, that I can already tell that that's going to be that's yeah. going to be a point of contention at the board level too for for committing funds to the project because right. it's it's a roof. Right. Now, granted, the design is such that you'd see it. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. No, and you would, and we have done roofs before. Correct. Um, you know, I, I kind of feel like we're in. The beginning phase of this whole thing sure and so we've got buildings that haven't been touched since what 1990 yeah, um minimum. so there's some of this stuff that we're gonna but I, I do really believe the next phase of this we you know that needs to be part of our conversation we need to talk about roofs we need to talk about things that are in alleys we need to talk about you know because you know at the end of the day i think our responsibility uh, in this program is you know this is really for the citizens of downtown or of the of the village and for their experience in the downtown area and things on you know behind the backs of alleys doesn't near necessarily um, move us to a, a better experience for the individual citizens. So um, you know, being where we're at in this whole thing at this point, you know, I don't think it's worth uh, contending because I do want this project to get through, um, and I think we have enough precedent to allow it to get through. But I, I definitely do think we need to fine tune some of that stuff. And once we've gotten a lot of this major work done, some of the heavy lifting, like the Rose Garden building, this building, um, you know, obviously uh, the old Corksire, which is now Copper Barrel, um, you know, those you know blocks, you know, these are projects that have been let to. Yeah. Well, even the hardware store across the street. And the hardware store, which, you know, again, we approved that sort of, you know, you know, it was a nice baby step, but we're hoping that the new owner that comes into something even, you know, uh, even better than that. So that, that was just a point I wanted to bring up, just more for our notes. And we should definitely put on the calendar a time to sit down yeah. now that we're kind of through this phase. Yeah, that, I hadn't pushed it because I want to be able to get. Yeah, we just need to get through all these projects this year. And it is a unique year. Streetscape is being done, so all the projects that we can kind of do at this time, I think, is definitely um, because the goal is to sort of attract investment. Right? That's really what this is. This program is at root about is to bridge the gap between you know owners of buildings and doing things that they they can't do because the revenue of their business doesn't justify that level of expense. Um, and I think this does fall into that category. And I think it would be better. I mean, we do look at uh, Roy's, you know project. I mean, it took a really, you know, not so attractive looking building 
and it's now one of the nicest buildings that we have in town. Yeah. So it would be nice to see eventually see the K follow suit on that and sort of do that. And so if this is a, a way to get them in the door, I think it's a, it's a good first start. And I understand for the building, we need to take care of that. Otherwise, uh, the rest of it's going to be <clears throat> degraded, you know, um, yeah. at a level. So, um, no. So any other questions or comments regarding this? Um, Dave, got any thoughts? No. Karen, any additional thoughts? Okay. Bill? You, no. you, are you familiar with all the details of this project? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. All right, then uh, at this point, I will entertain a motion um, on this uh, item in front of us. So moved. Okay, uh, we, we do need to declare a uh, level funding. So um, we have up to 75%. So in the motion, we'll have to declare the amount um, uh, percentage wise, and then I can turn that into it. Well, I already have it. So. so I would move that we proceed with 75% of the funding. I'll second it. Any questions or comments? Who second? I did. Bill Swallow. Thanks, Bill. Uh, if there are no questions or comments, uh, let's go to the roll because we are uh, voting on, uh, on money. So I will uh, I will call the roll and uh, just indicate uh, if you um, want to vote for the motion on the table by uh, saying aye. If uh, you oppose, say nay. Um, Karen Traska. Aye. David Pizzolato. Aye. Bill Swallow. Aye. Uh, Mike Reed. Aye. And Ryan Krajewski also votes aye. Um, that is uh, five to zero, so the motion passes. Okay, fantastic. And we'll see what the Bill's board does with it. Yeah. So hopefully we pass it. So thank you again, uh, Bill, for everything that uh, you have yeah, yeah, Thank you. Um, if you talk to Gina, let her know that it may not be on the next board meeting's agenda. It may be in the first meeting of August. Okay, and the reason I say that is because, again, I want to get some of the procedural stuff worked out. I know that they want to get moving on this, and I respect that. But I, I also want to get some of the procedural stuff done because I, I don't want to. Um, I don't want to get into another argument with trustees about the merits of a project if there's a there's already that we can define the process to have that conversation. So it makes sense. Kind of, so of course, in their favor, I'm sure they'd be okay with holding up. Well, I don't think two weeks is going to make or break them since they haven't done anything respectfully for the most part since 1990. So, <laughs> like, I know that they, I know that they painted and all that kind of stuff. But I'm saying that the major stuff that we're trying to address, you know, has yeah. been since 1990. So I think that they'll understand, especially if it makes things easier moving forward. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I think that works. Um, now we do have the development of long-term strategy of the Business Development Commission. Um, we don't really have, uh, I mean, we can sort of go on to that. In my mind, coming into this meeting, I, I, part of me kind of thought that we would push this one more time uh, to the next meeting, give us another chance to relook at all this stuff again. It's been a couple of meetings since we've done it. Um, we've been primarily focused on facade program applications. Um, so at this point, I'm kind of of the opinion that we kind of table this until the next meeting. And then the next two meetings will basically spend all of our time on those two things that will give us time. Uh, the only thing I will say is we should spend some time kind of revisiting that spreadsheet. I'll resend that out again um, where we are at in the uh, progress. Um, and then uh, we can put that up there. Next. Is everyone kind of on board with that? Yep. Yeah. Okay. It is the summer yeah. too. So um, get out while the lights out. So. <laughs> Um, and we okay. can let Aaron decide on the phone. And we like Aaron's perspective on it. <laughs> and I know he wants to. Should we make a motion? I was going to say that. I will entertain a motion to table uh, item number six uh, to the next meeting. I'll make a motion. Second. Okay. Okay. Any questions or comments? Okay. No. All those in favor of moving item number six into our next meeting, uh, aye. indicate by saying aye. 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 Okay, uh, five to zero. Um, okay, and then the uh, item number seven, I don't know if you guys had a chance to see, I sent that to uh, Mike, Heather Forder, David Pizzolato. Um, the uh, O'Reilly Family Dental article has been uh, published and, and posted. posted. And it has been pushed. Yeah, so Josh posted it on our website the other day, and before our meeting today, I, I posted it on social. 
Okay, so it's out there for everybody's read pleasure. Right, fantastic. And uh, so I encourage you to read it. It's a very interesting story about um, how Herman Dental um, sort of was closing down their shop. And uh, one of the women that works there, Paula, I don't remember what her last name is, but um, she had happened to run into the owners of this particular one and they found out that it was for sale. And so they had always wanted to be in Hampshire. So they came out and bought that facility right up to 72 um, to keep it as a dental office and um, everyone's very happy. So I encourage you to take some time to read it. It was a very good article and special thank you as always goes out to Jeannie Meyer for um, writing these. She does it uh, pro bono. So, um, and she has been doing it now for the better part of five years. So, wow. um, you know, I think that's really special and yeah. we're really lucky that we have, I mean, she's a professional, you know, journalist on top of it. So, uh, so it's, uh, we're really, uh, Lucky to have her. Uh, she does a really good job making this village. She does. Yes. <laughs> um, so up next, let's talk about this. Uh, Dave, this is the order you have it in, correct? Chicken Dip, RK Services, Kruger Accounting, and Iron Walk. Is that correct? That's correct. Okay. So uh, next up, uh, we'll be doing. Can, uh, can I suggest a, something? Yeah. Yeah. We. I mean, we're at the point now, now I, we need to kind of add some. I'd like to have the next one, if we could. Have G focus on you guys. Have focus on the BDC and what you do, and the beautification committee, and the role that you played in the brand new streetscape. Because the next one will be out. The next one will be out after this all opens. That's a good idea. That's and, a good idea. and everybody and everybody always asks, you know, how this happened, right? They act like it's just somebody that's just one person, and it's not. This has been years. You've been doing this since what 2004 before. You know, I mean, that's right. It has been more than five years. Yeah. Since it's been, I mean, <laughs> when did you guys start? When did you start the main street <laughs> committee? Man? Uh, oh, one. Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah, before that. This is this is 21 years in the making. Yeah. You know, and so I think that, idea. you know, we we didn't we specify this Hampshire's very own. Well, the, the BBC and the beautification committee are Hampshire's very own. Okay. So if you guys are willing to entertain that and entertain Jeannie asking you questions about how it came to be and that kind of stuff. I think I think that'd be a good opportunity to to focus on, and maybe that you know a good story like that. And I'm, don't don't misunderstand me. Focusing on our businesses are, is good, but oh yeah. But if we could do some kind of press release about some of the processes that we've changed and some of the work that these two commissions have done, I mean that's something that we could put into a press release and then developers can see. It. Sure, great idea. I think that's a great it's idea. A positive press for some of the work. Great idea. Yeah. yeah. Okay. All right, Dave, you want to um, modify that list in the meeting in the minutes, and then I will reach out to Jeannie and uh, have a conversation with her and let her know that's what our plan is. So, and then we'll ask her to try to get it done sort of around the time of the uh, of the opening of the streetscape. Well, yeah, well, if we can, but then what we could do is if you guys are at the streetscape, we can get a picture of you guys standing next to each other around the downtown, and that could be our photograph. Yeah, no, that'd be awesome. You know, and then we can release it, and then we could probably even put it into our newsletter that goes out to everybody. So it would be Hampshire's very own, and then we can pump that and tell them that this is an article like this is released every month, and it'd be on our website. I like it. I think it's a great idea. Agreed. All right. Awesome. Fantastic. Um, Josh, do you have, or Josh or Mike, do you have any updates on new and existing businesses in the village that you, uh, anything that you care to share with us? Yeah, sure. Uh, the first thing that, comes to mind I, I guess yeah it's an existing business um the new owner of jimmy sports bar got his liquor license approved at the last liquor commission meeting uh obviously mike knows that uh so he's going to be you know moving forward uh let's see We've got a whole a whole list here actually you can't leave out the best part he's renaming it harps lounge because his daughter's name is public oh so that's nice. Yeah, so I, you like those kind of feel good stories. Yeah. What's it, what's the name, Mike? Harps Lounge. Eight like H A R P S. Yep. Well, well, no, just just yeah, exactly. Okay. First daughter Harper. Uh, so what else here? Um, on the kind of more retail style commercial side uh joe lazar seems to be re-engaging his engineer and moving forward with his retail center uh just west of casey's you know part of that same lot so that's looking like it might start moving again um i know he's got some tenants lined up i don't know how many he needs before he builds but 
Uh, the Romke 72 people have submitted a concept plan. So that's the 40 acres that was originally part of Tuscany Woods and they, it got broken apart uh, last fall. So Romke 72 is the company. DeBrow Construction is the, are the people that are doing it. They will be developing that and um, they've submitted a concept plan for the Planning and Zoning Commission's meeting this month. Uh, so they'll be reviewing there and, and from our meeting was and was it this week or last week i think it was last week with them uh they want to move quickly so um hopefully we'll see that come in this fall uh, or, insight, or spring any insight josh into what so the concept plan has a larger parcel in the back and then has a, either three or four um commercial parcels in the front i know they're still working with james motors to get him there um, and then they've talked about that they've been engaging with uh, like a couple fast food joints and a coffee place, not Starbucks, but uh, another type of, you know, drive through coffee and go through, get coffee. Um, so that, that's all I know for now. I don't know that they've signed anybody uh, as far as I'm aware. Great. Thanks. Uh, and other good news, Project Yukon, uh, if you... I, can't remember how long it's been since we found out, but the Shireland property is what they were looking at, and they are no longer interested there because of um, the increase in size requirement that happened a while ago. So now they're looking for at least 200 acres. Um, they want a little more than that. They're actually looking for closer to 220. So that is the uh, 1.5 million square foot logistics or distribution facility that we don't actually know who it is, you know, codename Project Yukon. They uh, are now looking at the Van Vlissingen site, which is um, land between Interstate 90 and US 20, just west of Lakewood. So there's about 475 acres left there that the Van Vlissingen uh, company owns. And they are, you know, they've now told us that they'd be willing to sell all of that uh, to some other investor or developer. And so we're trying to put together a deal that somebody will buy it and then sell, you know, almost half of it to Project Yukon. Um, so we're on the short list again for that site, and we'll see if we can uh, get it working. What else? Um, uh, there's going to be a kind of a courtesy concept uh, presentation to the village board next week um, for a company called Old Dominion Freight, another logistics company that wants to locate in um, the Hampshire Woods Business Park. So that's over by just just north of Pedag is what they're looking at right now. There's about 60 acres there, and they're looking at buying about 20 to 30 acres of it uh, to put a new logistics center in. So that's still a strong, you know, market that Hampshire is good for. Uh, and that doesn't seem to be slowing down anytime soon. You know, some of the builders are talking about that. You know, they're starting to see maybe the the hot building market for new houses and stuff is is maybe going to slow down here pretty soon, but. The logistics guys, you know, the big office and, and warehouse guys are not uh, not worried, so it's good. And I think that is the Hampshire Logistics Park, which is on the uh, east side of 20, on the northeast side of 20 there by the water tower are moving forward. They've submitted uh, engineering, their final engineering, and They've gotten uh, conditional approval from planning and zoning for their final plat. So as soon as they get all their engineering done and get a clean review letter, that'll come to the village board and they'll get to start moving there. Any questions about any of that? Sounds good. Oh, thank you. A any word on the library? That's not something that we can talk about. Sorry. No, fair enough. That's fine. I didn't know that that's been uh, sort of uh, an open question for a little bit of time. So, um, hopefully, that's a different answer than you wanted. <laughs> I like that something's being talked about that you can't talk about it. That's good. <laughs> right, right, right. That in and of itself. In and of itself. <laughs> um, this is a good word. <laughs> Does anyone have anything else they want to talk about? Main Street. The yes. Program. Yes. So I noticed in the because I was not here last month. I apologize. Yeah. Nope. Um, but the notes, the minutes mentioned that we would discuss the role of Main Street at this meeting. Now that Susie's not part of the BBC, is that something that we're still planning on talking about? It, it is, yeah. Okay. So um, it is, uh, it is something that um, you know is not left our uh, our 
you know, our focus. Um, it's just uh, you know, we want to get to the street, streetscape and uh, all the side stuff. And I think when we get into the uh, you know the slower parts of the year, then we just need to rethink. We're looking for someone to take down that responsibility. Um, so I think uh, I need to get the, the sixth and uh, potentially seventh. We actually got another application that just came in for uh, another person who was interested in being on our board that I need to reach out to um, and communicate with. Uh, but yeah, it, it certainly is something that uh, we're still committed to. Yeah, as an idea, we went and uh, re-upped our membership, I think uh, a couple months ago, uh, maybe six weeks ago. Um, but uh, well, since our ambassador program hasn't exactly been what we had hoped it would be, okay. I'm, I'm available and willing to okay. consider taking over Main Street. Okay, perfect. Um, I think it's important, and I think Susie laid such great groundwork, and I would love to pick up the baton and go with it, or another person, but I'm happy to throw my name into the ring. No, that's awesome. That's yeah. exactly kind of what we're looking for. Now that uh, we're looking for someone who's really interested in it to uh, kind of take it on, and so that actually helps solve the problem. That question. So, um, so I'll probably reach out to you here then sometime in the, in the future here, um, and let's just talk about because the the goal of the main street is to sort of fold in some of the other um, uh, stakeholders in the community, from the park district to the fire district to the township to you know try to get you know everybody sort of involved in, in working on it. Obviously, we're going to have a great first step with the streetscape being completed, um, and I think it's probably about time to get to it. So awesome, thank you. Yeah. Appreciate it. All right, anything else? I do I have one more thing for the commission? Uh, just a small new thing. It's not super new because uh, the idea came from this commission. Maybe several months back, you all were talking about electric charging stations, um, electric vehicle charging stations. So um, we, you know, staff reached out to a couple companies just to maybe see what was what, you know, get some quotes, stuff like that. Uh, one company got back to us very quickly and offered to do a site visit almost, you know, the next day. Uh, so I did meet with a company called ChargePoint, or actually I think the the company is Thayer and they sell ChargePoint chargers. Uh, so we looked at the couple of public lots. They did a couple of renderings for us. Um, I can I can share my screen just so you get an idea of what uh, we're getting quoted. So they're going to quote these smaller uh, charges right here. You can kind of see them, and I'll show you a larger picture too. Um, but they're going to quote us for two of these uh, smaller chargers and then also for two fast chargers, which are significantly more expensive. Uh, but the cool part, uh, here's just another view of what the charger looks like more up close. Uh, but the interesting part is that there was an issue with uh, Volkswagen where they got uh, a little sideways on some of their emissions testing, so they had to pay a bunch of money. Um, and then there was this huge fund that now all the states are administering in different, you know, slightly different ways related to uh, electric vehicle charging and, and things of that nature. So Illinois was supposed to release their guidelines for that grant uh, funding on July 1st. Uh, it's going through IEPA, so we're they didn't uh, release it on July 1st, so we're just waiting for that, waiting for that now. Um, but if that comes out, you know, some states have been funding up to 80% of these projects. Um, you know, the entire project, some of them will only fund, you know, the, the purchase and the installation costs. Uh, so whatever else there might be, they don't fund. So we're just, you know, starting to look into that. And uh, it's something that the BDC talked about before. So I thought I'd mention it. Great, Josh. I, I had mentioned to to, uh, uh, to Jay at one point when we we're having that conversation as an owner of an electric vehicle, um, the slow chargers are don't have anywhere near the value. Uh, just be so like a supercharger like on my tesla it yeah. takes 45 minutes okay. for a full charge so what you what you're really looking for like so what, this is what my wife and i will do um because she loves that car so if we go on a trip you will actually build your stop for your restaurant you know um you're gonna have you know, 45 minutes to kill you know until the tech improves which it will improve um the slow chargers could take three hours wow four hours and so if you're there for 45 minutes, you might get a quarter of a charge. What you're not going to get is you're not going to pull people in to yeah. your community with that. So that, that's my only feedback on it. And that's just from lived experience that we've had. Yeah. Um, so the, the, the slow chargers just, I, I don't know who would use those um, ultimately. Yeah, Jane, I, Jane, I talked about that already. Um, the 
the rub, I guess, if you want to call it, is that the the two slow chargers, they estimated roughly around $30,000 for the whole project. For two right. fast chargers, they estimated closer to 100000 So, okay. um, you know, depending on grant funding and how that all works out, uh, it's not budgeted for this fiscal year. So, you know, it would it'd be a consideration for next fiscal year or, you know, the board might consider it for, uh, you know, through the new process of unbudgeted things if they would like to. Uh, but it's a significantly different price jump. But as you said, it might not be worth it to even spend $30,000 or whatever percentage if it's not going to, you know, do its do its job as the BDC discussed and, and bring people to Hampshire. Yeah, and in this intermediate period that we have while the tech is being, you know, developed and it is being developed and there's tons of companies working on fast charging right now, but it's a we're still ways away. But in that intermediate, it could make you a destination location just by the fact that you have one of those because they are rare. We've also been trying to obtain like grant funding and trying to look at different funding offer, uh, opportunities and mechanisms to get these in place, whether yeah. it be knocking on our elected officials' doors or you know environmental stuff. Or, right. Because the people that own electric cars in this community are going to have chargers in the garage. Right. Right. I mean, that's just how it's going to be. Well, right. you know, the, the, in the city, you know, where you live in an apartment or you live, you know, you don't necessarily have a garage, you don't have one accessible in your general parking garage. You know, these little mini chargers might have value. Like my wife and I would probably never use the one here in Hampshire just because we have a charging in our garage. But it is for people traveling and because we are so close to and that it, it really, I mean, I think because we're, you know, um, we come off the highway and it's only you know, to get off the highway to get into downtown is what about a four minute ride. I mean, people would make that stop and you could drive restaurant traffic that way really could, with the supercharger or the fast chargers. Um, but like I said, I'm not making that argument because we would probably never use it because we charge in our garage. I mean, we roll out with a full charge every day. So. Um, and I think that's, you know, I've even talked to, you know, my buddy Joe Lazar about his gas stations, you know, as, as we go yeah. electric, you know, people aren't going to charge the way that they, you fill up with gas. You know, you, you, most people specifically out here are going to roll out of their garages with full charges. Um, it's really going to be for people traveling, you know, long distances that need it. And that could really draw people into our community. Yeah. Um, to eat, you know, patronize the restaurants once we get more of them. Um, we'll soon. <laughs> <laughs> so, all right, anything else? Okay, so at this point, I will entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. Sergeant, so, any questions or comments? All those in favor of adjourning uh, the meeting of the Business Development Commission indicate by saying aye. Aye. Uh, all those opposed say nay. The eyes have it. We'll see you guys next month. All right. All right. Thank you guys. Enjoy.